us from God. He himself has set the standards of excellence for us. He is our ultimate example of complete success. Now, this is in, in, this is a teaching book that I was taught in Rima many many years ago. It's been it's been about 47 years, I think, by this time. So, uh, just as the Lord has called us into Christian ministry and service, He also has called us to reach for perfection in our vocation. Now, young ministers, is um, Daniel still here or did he leave? No, Daniel's down here. He just has his uh, camera. Because uh, this this is good for you to hear too, Daniel. Just as the Lord called us into Christian ministry and service, he, uh, he has called us to reach for perfection in our uh, vocation. Uh, Matthew 5, 48. Just uh, uh, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Did I give you that already? Okay. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where you're called. Ephesians 4, 1. We are also required to demand excellent from the, those places uh, in our church. If you're a pastor or if you hold any office in, in a church, you uh, are required to demand excellence from those places. If you're a pastor, you're required by God to demand excellent out of his congregation as well as those who work with you in the ministry. As a minister called out on the field, he will, you will demand excellence from the people who work for you and for the congregation you serve. We must be willing to demand the highest form of excellence from the ministries we are involved in. The Apostle Paul recognizes the gravity uh, uh, his calling. He knows that the gospel was commanded into his commanded into his trust according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which are committed to uh, to my uh, to my trust. That's First Timothy one eleven. It's hard hard for me to walk, talk slow. But Jimmy demands that of me as a teacher. So Paul took the training of his disciples very seriously because he realized that they were handling the mightiest power in the universe. He wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is in Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. The gospel is the power of God. The gospel is not only the power by which a person is saved from it, it is also God's unlimited ability to save, heal, and to deliver. As ministers of the gospel, we are entrusted with God's strength and might. We are therefore faced with two responsibilities. Now, I know a lot of pastors has an attitude of, uh, I'm unworthy. But God, what God makes, he makes us worthy. And he gives us our word as a guideline. Would you uh, agree with me, Dave? Yes. So we have number one, we have the responsibility to face. Number one, to vet, develop and maintain excellence of ministry. Number two, 
is to deal with Satan. We are to take the word of God and send him back where he came from. And uh, <laughs> some people run. Uh, I did this one night, and, and I won't say any names or anything like that, but there was one person that literally ran. I thought that they were going to tear the microphone down trying to get out. <laughs> so we have to deal with these things. We have to deal with Satan. So excellence in ministry absolutely will not tolerate unbelief, failure, or take the easy way out. A ministry of excellence will pay whatever price it takes to get the job done God's way. To get the job done God's way. Our ministries represent Jesus Christ to the world. Ours is a sacred calling. It must be uh, executed with dedication and integrity. We are expected to demonstrate absolute honesty and commitment. So whatever a, a firm decision to succeed without a without a firm decision to succeed with, God help, God's help. We cannot hope to maintain the measure of maturity and perfection to that ministry that uh, that He demands. Having the acknowledgement, or having acknowledged the call and anointing of God on our life, we pose a serious threat to Satan. In His eyes, we have become the most dangerous living things on this globe. Our second responsibility is to contend with him. Satan is not worried about God. He is postponing that inevitable confirmation, conformation, as long as he can. He don't want to meet with God no more. But since we represent God's divine power and authority in this world, the adversary must recognize with us, or reckon with us, if a person were to die now, the devil would not care whether he went to heaven or hell. Neither way, he would be forever removed from the field of battle and out of his way. What Satan, what Satan does not fear is a person who is alive, one who has God's divine nature. He does fear, and I said does not. What Satan does fear is a person who is alive, one who has God's divine nature in his spirit and the word of God in their mouth. Only such a person can uh, take that sword of the spirit, the word of God, with accuracy. We are dangerous to him, and we have to resist him. When we strap on the full armor of God, that's in 6.11, we must be prepared and uh, and determined to use it. Now, I'm going to ask questions after this, and I want to see how many people has really listened and uh, can give the answers. The evil one will certainly attack us with all the forces of darkness. At the same time, be prepared for victory. All of the combined forces of hell are not powerful enough to defeat us. How many of you know that? I want you to speak up and say something. How many of you know that? Uh, yes, I would say uh, most definitely yeah, with the forces. Amen. That... I want to come at from you, Daniel. I'm going to hang up. What's the matter? No, don't don't go, honey. Don't go? It's okay. No. Stay and listen to Everything is? We're, we're learning. We're I'm learning. Not, I'm not being included. You, you are in, included. You're, you are. You are I'm here. You can need just the same as I'm talking to anybody else. He just asked a and question. You got all the scriptures and everything, so you most definitely included. 
This is for all of us. And with my my family taking care of whoever I need to, not, uh, oh, you can just do it over the phone. Uh, I want you to listen to what the the teaching is, honey. I want you to listen uh, and hear the word of God. Would you do that, honey? That's that's what we're here for, here, to learn, and the teaching. And that's uh, and Brother Daniels is uh, gonna agree with uh, Sister Aretta and myself, too, and the others that are right. in here. Yes, that's what we're all here for. We're here yeah. with you, baby. We're here with you, honey. You're not here alone. You made a very, very strong statement over here, Brandy, and it's it's real relevant to what the Melissa is. What is so hard about being void in, in honesty to your word? It's not hard if you're honest, right? Right. The armor of the devil, the armory of the devil and his cohorts are restricted. Now listen to this, Brandy. It, uh, Satan is restricted to that which is common to man. That scripture is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Yep. See? Okay. Let, nope. me, let me do my lesson, honey. All right. I'm sorry. Just, just, uh, just. Take a, take, take a, take a deep, deep breath. breath and, yeah. Uh, Thanks. He, he cannot get back into his knowledge of spiritual warfare, making use of supernatural uh, weaponry. His power and his arms are limited. Satan has no secret tactics to call upon to prevail against us if we are, if we will not, if we will not stand firm. He's going to attack us. God, a God-given weapons of our welfare are powerful through through God in the pulling down of strongholds as second Corinthians ten four. Satan Satan is limited. We are not the victor the victory is ours. We're not limited. We are not limited. Satan is limited. We are not limited. Amen. The yeah. victory is ours. First, uh, First John four four, and First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. First John yeah. four four. Get that out. Fifteen fifty seven. You get those, uh, Mike. Gu- guarantee it. Greater is He that is in you, Brandy than he that's in the world. When that's we're right. a born again believer, when we know Jesus as our personal Savior, greater is he in, in us than he is in the world. And let's say it like that. Greater is he that's in Brandy than he that is in the world. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In the following, uh, in, in the next six steps uh, of uh, excellency, uh, I'm going to um, just uh, just go on with this. Your success will be assured. You have my word of it, but most importantly, you have God's word on it because his word is the authority of which they are all based. <clears throat> your dedication, now it's our decision. When we're dedicated, it is our decision. The first step to excellence in ministry is dedication. True dedication is a decision of quality, a decision which that is no turning back. True dedication simply makes a decision based on one commitment to God, not on feelings or emotions. Now, I think that every one of you needs to really take this in because in the soon coming things, 
you're going to have to have on your armor full. We're heading into some hard times. And when we abide in him, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, when we abide in that, we are above all of these things happening. We can walk on and stand strong Mm -hmm. with the word of God. Many people pray and beg God to give them a burden for, for souls. An overwhelming feeling that will make them win the lost. Now that's their ministry. Such praying is foolish in light of the teaching of the New Testament. Now here are we uh, told to pray this way. We are however committed or commanded by Jesus Christ himself to go yet into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature that is Mark 16. The very fact that a person or a person it's Matthew 15. You got uh, uh, it broke up. It was something 15, Matthew something 15. It's Mark 16, 15. The very fact that a person's pr- person prays for burdens is evidence that he already has a heart to win souls. All he has to do is obey the commandment. If Jesus told us to do it, that should be sufficient motivation. It should be sufficient motivation whether we feel like it or not. The Bible says that Jesus was moved by compassion. So what is compassion? It is love. Likewise, God is love. Therefore, compassion is a person. If compassion told us to go, then we should be moved by compassion and pursue that task. We should be moved by God. We should be moved by what God has said, not by feelings. Now, remember what God said to us is the word of God. Mm-hmm. Just as a marriage unit union is, is uh, solidified by a commitment of faith instead of emotions, the stability of a, min- a ministry does not depend on your feelings. A decision for a ministry of excellence is a deep, firm resolution which men cannot alter uh, and circumstances cannot change. Now I'm teaching this kind of, of, of uh, lessons because I know that there's people here that will be mm-hmm. ministering or are, is already ministering and they need to get into this particular thought and hang mm-hmm. in there. So true commitment can be compared to a pilot in a single engine uh, airplane. If the pilot fails to midair, in midair, the pilot is committed to land his, his craft. He has mm-hmm. no choice. His feelings of fear, doubt, or emptiness are of absolute no consequences. Whatever or whatsoever, he will land whatsoever he will land his plane one way or another now you see how when I try to talk slow I get (laughs) into um, not doing good so I'm going to move on and I hope your ears will be open he will land his plane one way or another if he has committed himself to fly he will take control and land the best he can Spare his life as well as the living of of the lives of his passengers. A time will come in your life when you will face commitment. How you handle it now may well determine whether your success or failure, or even whether you live or die. If you're willing to face commitment in spite of the emergency and opposition, 
do not pursue the ministry any longer. That condition, take the time to get before God and study his word until the Holy Spirit and you deal with yourself, your willfulness to be committed. That's Philippians 2.13 tells us that God is at work in God that it tells you that God is at work in you to both will and do his good pleasure. He is faithful and he will uh, create in you the power and the desire to make a uncompromised uh, 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 decision. When you finally make a full, no quit, no turning back, Forever commitment to God. Hello, hello, God. Calling. Mm -hmm. Calling. Sorry about that. Can't just check it. Stop that. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Aretta. Your calling will be the most exciting thing you've ever done. Now, I'm talking to all of it because every single one of you. Amen. Uh, the order. Go ahead. Amen. But until mm -hmm. it's forever settled in your mind and heart, you will not. Uh, you will have hell on earth. Satan mm -hmm. met you unmercifully. If you don't know how to take authority over him and put him back where he needs to go, and don't be mm -hmm. don't be uh, timid about it, mm -hmm. you get him out of there. Now, don't be afraid to accept the responsibility of making. It. God has provided the power, furnished the weapon. And equip you with everything you need. It is the same as experiencing the new birth. Once you make the decision, God did the rest. His power, His spirit, and His word perform their functions, and you were born again. A decision was right. took. Excuse me. Okay. Is it okay that I'm not on here anymore because I'm not feeling good? Yes, honey, if you don't want to go. I mean, don't want to stay. Go ahead. Well, Miss Brand, All we'll, right. We'll be praying for you, Miss Brandy. Go get you some rest, okay? Well, we can stop and pray okay. for you now. Debbie, do you want to pray for her? Yes, I, and Miss Brandy, I'm going to pray for you before you leave, all right? All yes. right, y'all right. right, want to go ahead and just pray. Reach your hands out to her. Um, dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray over Brandy right now, God. God, right now, any illness that's trying to come against her, God, right now, God, I rebuke that illness in Jesus' name right now, God. And God, right now, even when she lay down, God, I just want you to touch her. I want you to heal her. I want you to continue filling her with your Holy, uh, your Holy Ghost. So right now, God, I'm speaking healing over her life in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. 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 All right, Mr. Sam, you go ahead and get you some rest. Lay down, okay? Amen. Good night, Good night I love you. All right, we'll see you again Let's, soon, okay? We'll see you. Have you guys gotten what I've, taught, what I've said so far? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Lady, you that is in me. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, uh, my office, you know what my office is, don't you, Daniel? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, tell me. Yeah. Tell me what my office is. What Your office? For Daniel before. Say what again? Yeah, what he says ordained me for. Well, preach the word. <laughs> That's not all. Uh, it's my word. I'm set to cap this free. All of that. I'm an ordained ordained bishop. Yes. And I teach pastors to go into their ministries. Yes. And if you ever want to come to me, you're welcome to. Uh -huh. And bring your wife with you because your wife needs, uh, needs to be in, uh, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. She okay, needs I know exactly to what you're talking about. You're one. And uh, mm -hmm. so, no, I have been doing this for a long time, and I try really hard to instill in them what uh, power that they have 
in the name of Jesus. And yeah. Satan will defeat you quick when you mm-hmm. start saying, I can't. You ever heard of mm-hmm. you can't? Mm-hmm. You can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. What's making What's that? Making I don't know. So, like somebody got a second device on. Well, there's two. You somebody's got on two two devices. And it's echoing through. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're good now. Yeah. Well, a man once uh, asked me what I did for a living. <laughs> oh, did he? I answered, I'm a preacher and a teacher. Uh, <laughs> oh, he no. replied. Yes, I had an uh, uncle who was in the ministry. My, it's a difficult life and a high price to pay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no, I've done my life. Yeah, we got to figure out what that is because somebody's echoing. Yeah. Right. It's I like, know, it's not, like your, it's not from my end. It's going to another device. Well, my phone is turned off too. But, uh, well, I don't think it's. Uh, okay, and we'll just try to go on. All right. Uh, never be deceived by thinking what being in the will of uh, God is ex- never be deceived by thinking that being in the will of God is expensive the most costly thing on this planet is being out of the will of God you cannot afford it so we've got to find our place in the body now you see if I had to just teach it to you tonight Daniel mm-hmm. I'm so because this is what I teach my teachers that I'm teaching and I bring them into my Aretta's Kingdom Warrior uh, corner corner uh-huh. and uh, teach them there away from uh, I had a couple of people hack into my uh, place and that made it a little difficult one time but okay. I think it's then- right now because when I'm ministering to people like that, I don't need to have other uh, people that is less, you know, uh, in there with us. If you understand what I mean, uh, Satan can certainly get a hold of them and uh, cause a lot of problems. So the Bible says that the calling of God are without repentance. That's Romans 11:23. So you're calling Daniel. There's no repentance for it. Amen. And you teach the gospel and learn from someone that really is anointed to teach, the, mm-hmm. the teachers to teach. Amen. Just mm-hmm. don't be haphazard about it. But the main thing you need to do, of course, and I know and I see right now that you have a personal relationship with the Father. And I'm sure your wife does too. Oh, and that's yes. the beginning of every single thing. Mm. And uh, uh, when you um, abide in him, let's see, and he abides in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be granted. Now look at the word shall. That is the strongest word in the vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Because it's definitely that way. <laughs> That's a red oh, nice. <laughs> I can't get over your white teeth. I, I love them when you smile. Um, I hope I don't make you self conscious. I don't thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I have a heart for young people. Now, uh, Miss, Miss, uh, um, Uh, Charlotte is one of my special people. Amen. I love her from the song and really connected with her. And and Michael, I got in trouble by my son one time, didn't I, Michael? (laughs) (laughs) Your mom was about to whip me, wasn't she? So, uh, the Bible says that the calling of God, the callings of God, not just the calling, the callings of God 
or without repentance. Can you hear? You can hear me well when I. Well, yes, that's no not problem. You're crystal clear. That's uh, you've got eleven twenty-three up there. No, twenty-nine. Eleven twenty-nine. Now. <laughs> Romans eleven twenty-nine two. Also, Michael. You hear me, Michael? Eleven Yeah, it's eleven twenty nine. And I like to read the uh, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about those uh, to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. And uh, I love the Amplified Bible for the simple reason you understand it that um, everything that's in the King James is, is in plain English in that verse, but it has a, an explanation with it. That's the reason I, I definitely keep, I've got a, a, a parallel, and you might want one too, a parallel of uh, a King James and an Amplified so that you can take the King James and read it and take the Amplified and explain it. It'd be good for your ministry. If well, I if I can one of these days, I might send you one of them. They're not that expensive. All right. So let's go on a little farther. If, if you are called to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, pastor, teacher, or any other ministry in the body of Christ, the Lord will not revoke the assignment given to you. He ordained you before the foundation of the world, Daniel. All right. I'm preaching to Daniel now. <laughs> but would you like to come in with me sometime? Uh, I can I can compl comply with your with your. Um, I know you work and I know you have a ministry. And you have to give the time to your wife. <laughs> oh, Make I got a lot on my plate. <laughs> a lot. I would love I'm to. I'm going to stop. If she would come in with you, too. She needs to be trained in the same thing you're trained in. Yeah, she's, um, right now, she reads a lot of devotion books and stuff like that, but she's not in it like I am. Yeah, um, she's getting there. But, um, like, I try to get her to do the live streams with me. Not quite there yet. She's getting there. <laughs> Probably another year or two, we might get her there. So we still yes. working. But she's doing some awesome things. So she's a very wise woman. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that she stands behind you, though. And that's important. Being yes. a mother is a big job. Yes. I oh, raised, yes. I raised three little boys by myself, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And uh, they turned out to be marvelous Christians yeah. and men. Yeah. My daughter came along and... Uh, uh, I, I was 40 when she was born, and uh, that's who I live. I live in their home now. Okay. I rent their apartment because I refused to come in <laughs> without yeah. paying my rent and having my friends. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's hard with in-laws sometimes, yeah. but it, <laughs> my son-in-law loves me, so he's he, and that, uh, my daughter told me, she said, Mom, if he didn't treat you well, I'd kill him. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Pulling up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll tease him, you know. <laughs> but he's not a Christian. I wish you guys would pray for him. His name is Matthew. All right. You got a difficult thing. No, he just, we, but we know you're we know you're standing on the next sixteen thirty one. Which uh, okay, Michael. What was the scripture? What I just gave you was I know you're standing on Act sixteen thirty one. For him. Yeah. So God has more respect for us than many of us give him credit for. 
Did you ever watch Master Craftsman at their trade? How does he treat his tools? He's not negligent and careless. His no. tools are specially designed and tempered, mm -hmm. full of strength and power to do very specific mm -hmm. actions. As a skilled craftsman, he depends upon his instruments for his livelihood. He meticulously uses, cares for, and maintains the tools of his trade. They are extensions of his creativity. He intends for them to last a lifetime and to be handed down to his son or to his daughter after him. The tools of a man's trade make care, uh, take care of him, and he takes mm -hmm. care of them. Well, in grace, you and I are the tools of God, crafted, mm -hmm. uh, God's crafted Jesus is the redemption, but we are the bearers of the good news. He is the vine, but we are the branches. Think about this. I'm, I'm giving you something to really preach on now. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can listen to me if you want to, but uh, you know what, what I mean. Some some people have the, uh, the idea that, uh, now I'm not saying, and I'm not being critical, but that they don't need any teaching. Don't tell me you don't need teaching because I got in that Bible and not knowing anything much about it. And uh, now you as a young man don't know nothing as you will as you progressively grow. Amen. And I because mean, all not get right, so. like knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reveal knowledge. And uh, when you well, you have to be faithful to him and talk to him. He's your father. If you had a father that you could go to and tell him your woes and, and ask him for information and help and so on, the father is an excellent, excellent father when we come to him. So we must devote our uh, ourselves to pleasing God. A decision, decision for total dedication includes a determination to please God. So uh, go through the New Testament and learn, learn those things that bring his pleasure, for instance. Studying by, studying by, uh, by subject is the best way you can study. Verse for word, verse is hard to do because there's so many subjects in subjects in, in one chapter. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. You get deeper and deeper. So you That's get all the scriptures together that tells the same thing. And you you have much wider. You have another additive. Okay, again, devote yourself to please and God. A decision for total dedication includes a determination to please God. Go through the New Testament and learn those things that bring him pleasure, for instance. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that's Hebrews 11.6. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we must walk by faith in order to please God. Mm -hmm. My God is not is not delighted when we are in the flesh. We must be spiritually minded. That is Roman 8, mm -hmm. Roman 8 1 through 8. If you don't get all the scripture, uh, am I going too fast for you, Michael? You're an expert on this, so I know that. Oh, yeah. I don't know this thing. <laughs> uh, well, he would stop me and tell me and ask me if, I, if he didn't. God uh, receives no enjoyment out of our being defeated. Defeated Christians do not delight their Heavenly Father. Grieve at the children of Israel because they were, uh, they were overcome in the wilderness. That is in Hebrews uh, 3, 16 and 17. Repeat that call it one more time, please. Hebrews what? It's Hebrews 3, 
16 and 17. Or some, when they have, uh, when they have heard, did provoke. Hear bit how, how bit. Not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved for 40 years? Was it not of them that sinned? Whose, uh, whose uh, carcasses fell in the wilderness? Hebrews 3, 16 and 17. Our not walking in victory is just as offensive to God as going out and knocking somebody cold. Think about it. Now, I'm giving wild type analysis. The decision to please the Father, the decision to live in victory. The victory which overcomes the world is faith. And you'll find that in 1 John 5 4. 1 John 5 4. Yeah. And I, when Michael gets it up, I'll read it. Um, a lot of times I don't read the scriptures, which I was called on it one time. But mm -hmm. you have to understand that getting the message out and giving you the, the, the scriptures to read. And don't depend on me just reading them to you. Yeah. will mean that you're faithful and wanting to progress. So, John 5, 4, for everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is a victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing pers uh, persistent, persistent, resist. <laughs> My nose John, is... Yeah. Uh, John 5, 4. Yes, our continuing persistence 